making your yard summer proof. In this video, we are going to go over the grasses that will get you through the summer that are the most heat and drought tolerant of all grass species and how important selecting the right grass variety is critical to making it through the summer. We're going to talk about amending the soil so it increases the water holding and air porosity of that soil in a technique that I have used for years on golf courses. And we're also going to talk about the use of wetting agents, helping that water increase its soil holding capacity and the infiltration rate of water. We're also going to touch on weed and disease control during this time of year when it's really, really tough. So let's get started. The two most drought resistant species for warm season grasses is Bermuda grass, for cool season grasses is tall fescue. Now, you warm season grass guys, stick with me because you may know. Bermuda grass has almost no shade tolerance whatsoever. And you can see here underneath this maple tree, this is a tall fescue yard and it's performing very well. I actually sat the camera up here for a reason. This is what this yard looked like on August 28th of 2024. And here's what it looked like <laughs> on, on July 28th of 2025. I redid this yard on my overseeding video. Actually, if you guys want to go to it, I have a mower blade in there that you could put on your mower. It actually removes a lot of the dead organic matter that you have on your yard, and it prepares a seed bed through a power raking system. It takes a lot of the elbow grease work out of overseeding your yard, so you guys can check that out. So, now, this is a seed tech, and you can see here, I actually had this blend, custom blended together with Trend City Seed. There is a cost of blending. This was a fairly pricey, uh, this is a fairly pricey seed bag of seed. But I really wanted to try out the better varieties of tall fescue on this yard to see how well they're performing. I've planted it here. I've also planted in the tall fescue ryegrass yard, and that spot treatment I, I demonstrated in that overseeding video. And I've been extremely happy with it. In fact, some of the areas where I really have a mono stand of this blend, you can see how much darker it is and how much better it is than the existing grass around it. Now, a little bit about tall fescue. Differences between it and bluegrass, for example. Bluegrass has rhizomes, and there's also stoloniferous grasses like Bermuda grass. This is how Bermuda grass creeps. It's still going to stay on the soil surface. Bluegrass has a rhizome that goes underneath the ground and pops back up. You can see illustrated in this picture from Ohio State University what I'm talking about. Now, let's look at tall fescue, at least what it used to do. I'll stick with me here for just a second as I explain this. Over the years, tall fescue has basically been a bunch-type grass where all the additional uh, sheets as it's spreading, it spreads from a crown in this area of the grass. There's no rhizome, there's no stolon, there's no really good way for that grass to horizontally spread like it would be in bluegrass, for example. And that's one of the advantages of bluegrass because it heals very fast because of those rhizomes. Now they are actually breeding varieties of tall fescue that actually have rhizomes. And you can actually find that in a blend from Twin City Seed called Resilience to Tall Fescue. It includes Daybreak and Xanadu. You can see here on the National Turf Grass Evaluation Program how they had ranked Daybreak and Xanadu. Both of them are very highly ranked on the NTEP trials. Now, I have Resilience to Tall Fescue. I have a seed list of ideas list that you can grab on Amazon. I have several other, I have bluegrass, ryegrass, tall fescue. I have blends on there, and I also have some Bermuda grass seeded varieties that we're going to talk about later. You guys want to click on the QR code. It'll take you right there, give you an idea of what's available on Amazon. It's something that you can get. It can be at your doorstep in two days. So if you want to check that out, go right ahead. Now, you can definitely blend this tall fescue back into an existing yard or put it in the areas that are giving you problems, very much like I demonstrated in that overseeding video where I just hit the areas and put, the, put a better variety of grass in that area, and those will take care of the problem areas of your yard or uniformly seed it all over it and try to get these better varieties in. And, of course, you can also do a renovation as well. If you're having areas like a shade area, tall fescue would be definitely your best bet. So not only you're getting excellent drought tolerance, but you're getting very good shade tolerance as well, particularly for those of you that have reached out. I have a Facebook page that a lot of folks are going to. Uh, there are a number of experts on there. You guys can join. The nice thing about the Facebook page, you can take pictures 
And then we, you can get our opinion on specifically things that are going wrong with your yard mate wing steer in a direction, particularly with fungus that we'll talk about here in a minute in, in the video. Now we're going to talk about Bermuda grass. And those of you that are a little bit in the northern area, stick with me. I've got something interesting for you. You may want to consider. This is Bermuda grass, specifically Yukon Bermuda grass. Now, there again, through plant breeding, they are actually growing varieties of Bermuda grass that, one, you can seed that are just as good as Tacoma 31s, 419s, some of the Bermuda grass vegetative only varieties, vegetative only being you sod, sprigging, plugging grass. They now have varieties of Bermuda grass you can actually seed. This one is Yukon. Now, where can you grow Yukon Bermuda grass? And USDA plant hardiness zones gives you an idea where you can plant certain plants, maybe ornamentals, maybe turf grass. I'll put it on the screen here and you can see it. Between zone 6B and 7B, Yukon Bermuda grass can be grown between 6B, which is my region, and 7B, which is further south. As you get further down in zone 8, all the way to 10. Puerto Rico, I think it's 11 or 12. I can't remember. Anyway, <laughs> you want to grow Monaco Bermuda grass. It does not have the cold tolerance as Yukon does. Now, I can tell you with this Yukon, I've grown it here since 2017. This year, and just about all years, I don't put any grub control on it. Reason being, it actually outgrows the grubs. I do not put any fungicide on it at all. In fact, in 35 years of maintaining 419 Bermuda grass in the Carolinas and this Yukon Bermuda grass, I cannot recall of any time I put a fungicide on Bermuda grass. It does go dormant. In my area in zone 6B, about Halloween, it starts to go dormant. Then it stays dormant till about the 1st of May ballpark, and then it comes out of dormancy, which will be brown. That is the drawback from it. You can overseed ryegrass into it and keep a green cover all year. I actually did that to golf courses on 419 Bermuda grass in the fairways and on the tees just to keep them looking nice during the winter months. You want a low maintenance grass that, and I don't water it here, I had one of the worst droughts in the mid-Atlantic than we have had in recent memory last year. I did a little bit of hand watering. I don't water this grass. And I have very little weed pressure and it's very easy to maintain. The reason why I'm going over this is a lot of folks don't realize about these varieties of Bermuda grass that you can grow. And for those of you who have a fast lifestyle, you got kids, or maybe you just don't want to fool with your yard that doggone much. Bermuda grass is the way to go in zone 6B, which is available. Oh, it's got in Ohio, Pennsylvania. I have it there again here in West Virginia. I'm higher elevation, a lot of you folks in Ohio. Check that out. It's just something to consider. And when you want to overseed that, it's probably in May. Really, it's hard to get seed to come up in during the summer. I recall a, a bent grass putting green that we did. And there again, since cool season grasses in the Raleigh-Durham area, what happened was we got a little late on the construction of the putting green. We tried to seed it in, in late June in Raleigh, and it just didn't go anywhere until September. I candidly have not seeded Bermuda grass during the summer. And as much as it likes the heat, I think there is a possibility that it would work, but I'd be more inclined to seed a Bermuda grass variety sometime in late May, very early June. And I believe when I did the transition here in 2017, it's very easy. I did a glyphosate application, killed everything out, put the Yukon Bermuda grass in, and I have not looked back since, other than the tall fescue in the back, because one thing about Bermuda, if you have a lot of shade, it's just not going to work. It really needs at least four hours of sun per day. Wedding agents. You have these spots in your yard where you just can't figure out what's wrong and it seems like it's kind of <laughs> uniformly dying out. What often happens is, is you typically have a south-facing slope. You may have areas outside the drip line of a tree. You may have an area where the, there's more prevailing wind going over the soil surface and drying it out faster, increasing what is known as the evapotranspiration rate. That's the rate at least that the plant is actually taking up water and the rate it leads to water is evaporating off the surface. In addition, you have areas in your yard where the soil has an organic coating on it. This can do two things. One, the soil not to be able to hold water as effectively as it should. Secondly, the infiltration rate of water, and you may have seen this, 
where you've actually irrigated water and it simply runs off the surface. I saw it on golf greens very often. A wetting agent, what it does, it breaks down the adhesive and cohesive forces of that water, allows it to penetrate in the soil, and it has polymers on it that actually attach itself to that organic layer on the soil particle and attracts the water to it and actually helps it hold water more effectively, and it evens out the soil and keeps it from drying out in these localized dry spots. We have them on golf greens, and we go out and we hand water them, which you may have to do to your yard in some areas where you have an increase of evapotranspiration rate or problem areas in your yard, particularly on the outside of the drip line of a tree. A little bit of bonus here. Herbicide that I found the most effective crabgrass, goosegrass, and Dallas grass control that you can use here in July and August on those weeds. And you can see what it's already done to this very early mature crabgrass plant. I just sprayed it three days ago, and you can see where it's whitening up. It essentially prevents the weed from photosynthesis by bleaching it. And you can also see how well it's doing on this clover as well. If you guys are looking for an effective weed control, crab, well, grassy weed control product, now the crabgrass destroyer is not going to work for Bermuda grass, guys, because it actually controls Bermuda grass. But I will give you guys one. As far as the warm season grass, guys, it's Celsius. And it comes in these 0.022 ounce packets. One packet does 2,000 square feet. It's probably the best herbicide during the summer that you can put out on warm season grasses, and you could bump on any warm season grass, including centipede and St. Augustine. Now, for everybody, if you have nut sedge, which is this, and you can see where this has been controlled, the product there would be sedge hammer. I've actually got all these on my Amazon storefront, so if you want to click on that, you the, the QR code, go to the links in the description, first comment, however you guys want to get there, depending, I'm trying to accommodate everybody, and there's a lot of TV viewers, so that's why I'm starting with the QR codes. But that is pretty much the soup to nuts as far as summer weed control products for all grasses. Thought I'd throw this in here because it came up this morning, and that is this. It's Pythium. It is a very aggressive disease, particularly with cool season lawns, and I have it in this one now, and I'm going to have to go out with a fungicide for it. I have a disease video that shows you how to identify disease, how to prevent disease resistance to the fungicide you're using, how to put a program together, and which fungicide treats which disease. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm going to have to go out with an oxystrobin on this yard, and I'm also going to video the difference between it preventative rate and a curative rate. So I'm going to have to go out with a curative rate. But if you want more about disease troll in your yard, check out that video. I will leave it here at the end. And I will also leave it in the description and first comment. You can check that link there. Amending your soil to make it hold water more effectively and efficiently. There is a lot of top dressing and leveling videos out there, particularly the top dressing video is probably the one that's more applicable to what I'm talking about here. In either one of those videos, and the top dressing one is probably one you want to watch as a supplement to this one. I don't want to make them things too long. But if you want to know more about it, you can check that out. I actually show you what can happen if you use the incorrect top dressing material to your soil and soil amendment on your soil and how it can significantly decrease the infiltration rate of your soil or how your soils hold water can actually increase your disease pressure on your lawn and also in the low spots, how they can collect water, hold water, and actually warm up during one of these summer rains and cook the grass. Do be aware of that. But in saying that, I forgot about this soil amendment and I'd used it on putting greens, fairways, teas for years. It is a ceramic aggregate. What a ceramic aggregate is, it is actually a baked clay that has 74% pore space within that clay particle, which holds a significant amount of soil. Think of it of a sand particle that actually holds water within that particle itself. Now, as I spoke about in those videos, you definitely do not want to put a finer size material over a coarser size material. So that's where these soil amendments, these ceramic soil amendments come into play because they are larger size particles. Now, how would you apply to your yard? Well, the first thing I do is airify. And this is why in my airification video, I advocated to go out and airify two weeks before summer stress because it's fresh, for lack of a better word, in the yard and allows that water to infiltrate as you can see here. But 
verify, take those cores out, then you're going to go ahead and apply in a uh, 80-20, 90-10, even 70-30 mix between sand and a ceramic aggregate. Fill those holes real well. Fill them all the way to the top so you get that advantage of what it's showing here. And in that way, that really, really helps because you're there. Again, water infiltration, nutrient holding capacity. That's why I really like these particular products instead of putting out organic matter or really anything else. This is definitely the way to go. And it goes a pretty far way. A bag does, particularly for mixing it with that sand. I did find two ceramic products on Amazon that you can get. One is the Pro Choice Select, and the other is a Turfus product. What's the difference between two? Obviously, the Turfus product is cheaper, but it's a larger particle size. As these particle sizes on these products get smaller, they get more expensive. The green, they actually have a greens gray product that I used on putting greens. So it's a very, very small particle size. It costs more money. So I wanted to give you guys the choice. I will tell you the difference between Pro Select and Turfus. Pro Select is going to mix with sand much better than the Turfus is because the Turfus is a larger particle size and has a tendency to settle. So if you do blend this up, and I'll get to the blending here in a second, that you need to put that on there and not try to shimmy it around because that Turfus go in the bottom and your large smarter particle size sand will go to the top. Pro Choice Select is closer to the particle size of sand, so it will blend better. There again, it's a couple dollars more. As I said, if you film clear of the top, that's really going to allow that water to infiltrate down in the soil, and it will obviously hold. You're adding cation exchange capacity with these ceramic aggregate products, and you're really allowing air this with a wetting agent? Holy moly, you're doing a really good job on the soil water holding capacity and that ability to infiltrate down in the soil during these hot, tough summer months. And that's why I said on the airification video, you should try to go ahead and airify and do this about two weeks before the onset of stress. So anyway. That's ceramic aggregates. Hey, I hope this video helps. I really, I went through a bunch of stuff and this is a time of year where I can go out in the yards and take pictures <laughs> and really show you a lot of good stuff. So, you know, that's pretty a sum up of everything that I know at least to do over the last 35 years and having a fancy smancy degree in this stuff, know how to get your yard past the drought. These disease issues, these uh, Grass control issues, grassy weed control during the summer can be really demanding because you have, you're dealing with a more mature crabgrass. There again, I go over that in my other videos. So I've got a ton of videos on home lawn care, been at this for two years. And despite what some people think, it is not that complicated, as I say. So hope this video helps. Good luck. Thanks.